Hi, I'm Nigel Redman with a supplement to my video on amplitude modulation. I made this interactive AM widget so you can get a feel for how amplitude modulation behaves with multiple frequencies. It's available on my website, earlevel.com. As the diagram shows, it displays the product of two signals, each signal the sum of three sinusoids. These are cosines, so each starts at the value 1 and cycles at the selected frequency. This means we can use 0 Hz when we need a DC offset, and each has an amplitude setting. Let's look at four common uses of AM. First up is tremolo. Let's start with a musical signal of three harmonics, with 100 Hz at 60%, 200 Hz at 50%, and 300 Hz at 40%. We have no output because the B signal is 0. Again, the output of 0 Hz is a constant, the value 1. If we bring it up to 100%, it reveals our signal. Now set B2 to 10 Hz and bring up its amplitude. You'll see the sidebands created around each signal component. They're responsible for the beating cancellation of the tremolo effect. Next is ring modulation. Continue with the same settings we used for tremolo, but remove B1 by setting its amplitude to 0%. Slide the B2 frequency up to simulate ring or balanced modulation by a sine wave. As you move up in frequency, the lower sidebands move downwards, but as they cross zero, they seem to change direction. Technically, they go negative, but sinusoids look the same going in either direction, so there's no difference between positive and negative here. Although similar to tremolo, the original signal doesn't appear in the output, only the sidebands, since there is no DC offset. For standard AM radio, we need to bias the signal positive. So, we set one of the frequencies to 0 Hz for the bias, and use the other two to simulate the signal, the radio program material. Start with A1 at 0 Hz, 90%. Set A2 to 30 Hz, 50%, and A3 to 50 Hz, 40%. Now set B1 to 200 Hz at 100%. To simulate a radio transmission at a station frequency of 200 Hz. Of course, this is far lower than AM stations use, but we need to stay on the chart. Try a second transmission by setting B2 to 400 Hz 60%, and a third with B3 at 700 Hz 80%. So, we have three radio stations broadcasting the same signal. You can change A2 and A3 to simulate changing broadcast material and see the result in each station. If you change the frequencies too much, you'll see them spill into the areas of the other stations. This is why radio stations have band limits on their broadcasts, so they don't disrupt other stations. And we can simulate the spectrum of digital audio. This is great for understanding how aliasing behaves. We'll simulate a signal with three frequencies at a sample rate of 500 Hz, which means our highest allowable frequency is 250 Hz. First, construct the signal by setting A1 to 30 Hz at 100%, A2 to 60 Hz at 80%, and A3 to 90 Hz at 70%. Sampling modulates the signal with a pulse train. That's the P in PCM. We'd need infinite cosines to simulate an ideal pulse train, but only the first few to get the basic idea. Set B1 to 0 Hz at 50%. This is the offset that keeps the pulse train positive in the time domain, alternating between 0 and 1. In the frequency domain, it's the component that includes the signal in the result. Next, set B2 to 500 Hz at 100%. This is the first harmonic of the sampling frequency. Finally, set B3 to 1000 Hz, the second harmonic. A perfect pulse train would have all integer multiples of the sampling frequency, but we have enough to fill the display. Let's consider how conversion back to analog requires a low-pass filter to remove everything above 250 Hz. Use the A3 frequency slider to move its component up through the spectrum. Notice that as it moves up, the corresponding sideband above moves down. If you raise A3 above 250 Hz, its modulated copy moves downward into the signal band beneath 250 Hz. This is aliasing and shows why we need to avoid producing frequencies above half the sample rate. I'll have more on how AM is the key to understanding digital audio in an upcoming video, and you can experiment with the AM widget yourself on earlevel.com.